said she, be, you know, she um, reached out to our families. She came and visited us all the time. She like became our voice on the outside, and we just like we developed a friendship with her, and we was comfortable with her, and we just we wanted our voices to be heard. We wanted people to understand our side of the story, opposed to just what they seen in the media. So she was able to, you know, be that outlet. And yeah, I was I was nervous, but I felt right in. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Um, I met Blair while I was incarcerated at Bedford, and when she came to me about um, doing a film, the only way I was going to agree to do with the film unless it was going to make a statement to know that this was wrong and that it will not happen again to somebody else's child. So, and that's how I got involved with the film. <laughs> It did. I actually, Blair and I, I think started talking eight years ago too. So we've been through the whole process together. So it absolutely made sense. And I was thrilled that she was bringing the story out because there didn't seem to be a lot of interest outside of a very small group of folks who already were fighting on about eighteen thousand different fronts. So to have that kind of microphone and to use it for these women's stories was something I'm really involved in. Does it ever, um, Patrice and Renata especially, does it ever feel like you're walking that line between responsibility, opportunity, and to, to obviously make a stand and have this um, podium from which to speak to and, and to stop similar injustices happening? Or do you sometimes want to just live your normal lives and get on with it? I mean, today really what is a normal life. <laughs> <laughs> Our life is our life. Like this is this is what we're about now. It happened to us, and it was unfortunate. We didn't deserve it, and the only right thing to do is to make sure it doesn't happen to anybody else or those who have gone through it. That's afraid to speak out. See how much support we have, and they step forward. You know, that's the only way you can really make a change is if you all stick together. So, um, I, I mean, this is this is what we're doing. It's, it's starting. It's here. Um, I agree with Renata. This is like a new one. Um, regardless whether Blair did the film or not, our lives was never going to go back to normal. This is what, something we would have had to face or reminisce on a daily when something on the news popped up or when we walked down the street and see somebody else being harassed or whatever the case may be. Our lives was totally changed from that day on. Um, so I do want to open it up. I know there's, there's got to be some uh, comments, feedback, and questions. Anyone has? Please raise that hand. Thank you. Thank you very much for this film. To what extent did the, the legal processes that you have you observed and witnessed in the film um, determine the structure of the film? And, to what extent were you kind of thinking of other structures if things hadn't gone the way they did? Um, well, New York doesn't allow uh, cameras in the courtroom. Um, oh. So I was in most of their original trial before I um, even thought about doing the film. And then during their appeals, I tried bringing in like, hidden microphones. <laughs> <laughs> really sound that great. Um, so, <laughs> I, I don't know, it was kind of a struggle to figure out how to talk about the court case, also because it's really, really complicated, and there's four people, and there was seven, so there were so many different things to talk about. Um, so at some point, um, basically, you know, we decided that the film was going to be a context for self-defense, and that in the courtroom we were going to um, try to focus on the judge and the misinstruction to the jury. Um, so we decided that a few years ago, but even then we still couldn't quite understand how we were visually gonna tell it. Um, you know, we had all the courtroom transcripts, but those are really boring um, to look at on the screen. Um, so then we started thinking about animation a few years ago, maybe uh, three years ago. And um, with, the, with the 
those specific scenes in mind with the orchestra, just because that was so outrageous. And I always knew I wanted to talk about that. And then also the um, when Kima Train's mom talks about being in the courtroom the day they were found guilty and just being surrounded by court officers and that moment when she couldn't see Train anymore, I always felt like that sounded so haunting and horrific and like an out-of-body experience. So um, we tried to bring that in a bit with um, with the animation, and then it kind of fell into place from there. Can I just add that? Not, the whole thing didn't even get into the film because the appeal was over, I think, a year and a half after the original trial, and then he sued them for $5 million. Wow. So half of my work was defending against the civil suit. So, I mean, it was just never ending, basically. Yeah, Is that over? Well, that has been settled. Yeah. These two settled so they didn't have Oh, that's oh. supposed to settle. Good evening. Um, I wanted to say to the producers, thank you very much. Um, I look forward to this. But to many language is my cousin. And I thank you very much for taking on this cause. And I thank you, my cousin, and the other ladies for your determination. Um, being a lesbian woman myself, I see how dangerous it is out there. But my question is truly this. Have you, since you're coming home, have you been back to Greenwich Village? How do you see it today as been? Are you comfortable being back out here? Well, oh, we, we actually, um, the place that we caught our case, that we had the incident that you see, IFC there, we premiered there Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> It was kind of uh, it was kind of scary because like you see certain footage in there that um, we had to kind of walk through what happened that night. So you never really get prepared to go back to the place that changed your life in such a negative way. But going back there, premiering there, and having the, the theater sold out that was an accomplishment, a major accomplishment. <laughs> Um, 
um, we had started trying to get permission at Rikers Island, and then um, I think we got permission like a week after uh, Renato was transferred out. Um, <laughs> um, we, when we received permission from uh, for Terrain's release, that was really that was incredible. Um, but then when Renata's release was happening, the Department of Corrections said they had never granted permission for anybody to shoot a prison release before. I said, you did for me two years ago. let me out Yeah, actually, then... Because someone wanted me somewhere else, like, I was, like, this major risk. Like, and they had the van windows yeah. covered, they had the van windows covered, and they had people surrounding me, walking me out, and I'm like, well, I have somebody coming. Somebody's coming to get me. They're like, well, not from here. We're taking me to the train station. I'm like, I don't know where I'm at. You know, they wasn't giving me no metro car, no money, no nothing. And, um... I said, well, why are you guys, you know, covering me like this? And he said, well, you got a high-profile case, you know, to be, you don't know what to expect out there. It could be sharpshooters. And I'm like, what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go. <laughs> yeah, they took me somewhere else. I don't know how Blair figured out where I was at, but she was there. <laughs> um, and then, the only, I'm trying to think what else we shot at the prison. When we shot the, um, the Kima um, going to visit a terrain in prison, uh, we just didn't ask for permission, and we did get chased by correction officers for a mile or two. Well, I got chased. You got chased. <laughs> so fast, we didn't have time to think, and we're family, so, you know, you ain't doing nothing to, to my friends, and vice versa, you know, so, I mean, we fall back, that's it. of just trying to rebuild their lives, you know, get their lives together um, from this whole situation. We live far apart, so we just keep in contact pretty much on Facebook. Thank you. Um, I have two questions. First, what is an admirer? What does that even mean? I mean, the New York Times? <laughs> I mean, that's the word. That is the word that actually got Blair moving. You know, that word admire to see that in the paper the next day in the New York Times, no less. So I'm going to take your question for rhetorical, but yeah. Um, if you want, uh, interviewed an officer who said he knew that he had the right people and slapping five and whatnot, what, what, who was this man and has he? Changed his feelings, or where was he? Yeah. Um, he he was interesting. Um, and it was, <laughs> um, in some ways, he was, in retrospect, um, I think pretty empathetic, all things considered. Um, I think that he thought that they got way too harsh prison sentences. Um, so um, I got the feeling that 
he thought that Turing's sentence of three and a half years was what they should have stayed at. Um, I, I don't know, it's, it's tough because I think he was one way in front of the camera and acted a very different way to them that night. Um, I don't know if you guys want to talk about him. <laughs> um, I don't know, I think he's a very by the book kind of officer, but I got the feeling that he put on for the camera and had a very different um, uh, reaction to them. Yeah, he, 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 all right. he taunted us, he taunted us. So to, to see him trying to like, you know, speak on something in the film, it's like, what are you, what are you even doing? You know, we know what you did to us, you know, it's, it was horrible, but. Yeah, he, he, you know, I don't understand when, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was him because it was a arresting officer that got on the stand who said that um, I was handcuffed when he told me my rights. And y'all can see in the picture I was handcuffed when he took that snapshot, right? So um, he also rewrote my statement. Um, he wrote down what he wanted to write down when he was trying to um, implicate Renata with the knife, trying to say that she told me to get my knife and that my co defendants even knew I had one. Um, so yeah, I found it kind of strange too that he got up there and said what he said. Um, he is on the 911 call. Uh, yeah, um, the question was, was that him on the 911 call? He was on it for a split second, but no, at the end, that was the uh, detective who, so he uh, um, arrested the women, and then the detective was at the scene um, at the IFC theater, and that was the one who was on the 911 call. I have wondered um, why the appeals were filed separately, and also why there was so much variation in the outcomes of the appeal. You can't really represent, if I had represented all three of them, they have very different interests. And because Patrice at trial, it is established that she had actually um, swung and, and hit and stabbed him, her arguments had to be different from Renata's and everyone else's. So everyone had to have separate counsel. Does that answer? So you saw how everyone got different sentences. So everyone had, when it came down to it, they were convicted of guilty thing. They were found guilty of different charges, right? And so what Renata got was completely different from hers. And so that meant that the years that they got were also different. Yeah, yeah and also with um, Terrain's, uh, when her charges were dismissed, they were dismissed on um, grounds of not enough evidence. And um, the appellate court ruled that they couldn't tell who she was in the camera, so as far, essentially as far as they were concerned, she wasn't involved. Um, so that's why she, her charges were dismissed. Um, Renata and Venice um, were convicted of the same charges, but with different sentences. And um, we didn't go into this in the film, but they were, basically they were granted retrials because they are visible in the camera. Um, but a part of the reason for the retrial was that um, they just weren't sure if they were <coughs> guilty or innocent, is, is essentially what they said. So they were brought back onto Rikers and they were both bailed out, and within a month of being bailed out, um, Venice was um, given a plea deal, and that's what she took two years to <coughs> serve, and she, she got out um, with, with the felony in the record. But then Renata, they wouldn't give that to, so Renata was out for six months, and they still wouldn't give her that same plea. So they finally um, gave her a plea of three and a half years, so she had to go back up for a year and a half after being out for six months. And I think she had just seen um, TJ for the first time like, a couple months before that. So um, yeah, that was the uh, that was the statement. Unfortunately, we only have time for one more question. We will be outside uh, following this, so more gentlemen over here. Oh, my lawyers was great. Mm -hmm. All of my appellate lawyer, my lawyer. Oh, at the trial? Yeah, my, he, 
They did good. I mean, they. I, I feel like it was effective. Um, but I didn't testify. It was a. It was a choice. They gave us choices on what we wanted to do. They didn't force anything on us, um, which I think was great. Um, but they. They was clear about everything that we was facing, what would happen if we do testify, what could possibly happen if we do testify, and what could possibly happen or how we may look if we don't testify. So everything was laid out on the table and we basically made our own decisions. Did anybody testify? <clears throat> I, I, had, didn't testify. I, had, I was forced to, I couldn't. I had no choice but to testify. So like for them three, it wasn't really like necessary, I guess, but because in my situation was like, more extreme than theirs, I had to testify. Either way, whether I testify or I did testify, I still was going to prison regardless. Because they, when I did testify, they twisted my words and everything else and called me a liar. And um, was my counsel effective? No, I, I, my lawyer actually didn't believe me until after I was found guilty. Um, yeah, I'll just add to that that uh, Train also testified. Um, and one, but one thing Renata's uh, lawyers uh, mentioned in the interview that we, we didn't put it in um, is that in New York, defense attorneys aren't um, given uh, witness lists or evidence lists until, or any of the evidence until the day of or the day before trial. And New York has been a, a stickler on that. Um, so they hadn't received the video camera or the medical records or any of that um, until right before trial started. Um, and then I will also add to Patrice's that the, the, I mean, the judge made, I don't know if you remember, some pretty crazy comments and basically said that um, Patrice was putting on on the stand and acting shy and meek and that that wasn't really who she was. So uh, if you have any ways that audiences can interact, find out more about the film, take any action, um, so just to tell you a bit about the life of the film, this is our fourth screening. We were just in Los Angeles, so obviously it's our first time playing in New York, and we're going to San Francisco on Sunday, or we'll be there next week. Um, so the screenings and the festival circuit have just begun. As an ITBS film, we will be on public television next year. Um, also, the United Nations has picked this film as one of six films that will travel to 77 countries. to address homophobia and transphobia worldwide, and this film kicked off that campaign, so we're very proud of that. Um, out in the night, tweet it, Facebook it, please visit our website. Um, we're developing the take action section. Right now we have some suggestions of, you know, organizations that we're starting to partner with, Fierce, right? Um, but also, you know, we're raising some funds to move this film forward out in the lobby. We're selling our posters. Um, the women are here to speak with. We're having wine across the street at Indie Cafe. Um, so please get involved. Thank you. Hashtag I just have one last thing I want to say um, that is just that, you know, a lot of this film addresses, talks about um, the women as survivors of this attack, but I do also just want to, I feel like it's important to say, um, and a part of why I got involved is, I really feel like they were a pocket of resistance that night and um, really stood there yes. and then did it again in the courtroom when they pled not guilty because they were written to a 25 years. <laughs>